God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Sing praise to our Creator, O sons of Adam's race. God's children by adoption baptized into his grace. Praise the Holy Trinity, undivided unity, Holy God, mighty God, God immortal be adored. Lord, in your anger, do not punish me. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me, Lord, in your rage. Your arrows have sunk deep in me. Your hand has come down upon me. Through your anger, all my body is sick. Through my sin, there is no health in my limbs. My guilt towers higher than my head. It is a weight too heavy to bear. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, in your anger, do, do not, not punish, punish me. me. Lord. You know all my longings. My wounds are foul and festering, the result of my own folly. I am bowed and brought to my knees. I go mourning all the day long. All my frame burns with fever. All my body is sick, spent and utterly crushed. I cry aloud in anguish of heart. O Lord, you know all my longing. My groans are not hidden from you. My heart throbs. My strength is spent. The very light has gone from my eyes. My friends avoid me like a leper. Those closest to me stand afar off. Those who plot against my life lay snares. Those who seek my ruin speak of harm planning treachery all the day long. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, you, you know, know all, all my longings. I confess my guilt to you, Lord. Do not abandon me, for you are my Savior. But I am like the deaf who cannot hear, like the dumb, unable to speak. I am like a man who hears nothing, in whose mouth is no defense. I count on you, O Lord. It is you, Lord God, who will answer. I pray, do not let them mock me, those who triumph if my foot should slip. For I am on the point of falling, and my pain is always before me. I confess that I am guilty, and my sin fills me with dismay. My wanton enemies are numberless, and my lying foes are many. They repay me evil for good, and attack me for seeking what is right. O Lord, do not forsake me. My God, do not stay afar off. Make haste, and come to my help. O Lord, my God my Savior. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I confess my guilt to you, Lord. Do, Do not, not abandon, abandon me, me for, for you are my Savior. My eyes keep watch for your saving help, awaiting the word that will justify me. From the first book of Kings, Nathan said to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, Have you not heard that Adonijah, son of Haggith, 
has become king without the knowledge of our Lord David? Come now, let me advise you, so that you may save your life and that of your son Solomon. Go, visit King David, and say to him, Did you not, Lord King, swear to your handmaid, Your son Solomon shall be king after me, and shall sit upon my throne? Why then has Adonijah become king? And while you are still there speaking to the king, I will come in after you and confirm what you have said. So Bathsheba visited the king in his room, while Abishag the Shunammite was attending him because of his advanced age. Bathsheba bowed in homage to the king, who said to her, What do you wish? She answered him, My lord, you swore to me your handmaid by the Lord your God, that my son Solomon should reign after you and sit upon your throne. But now Adonijah has become king, and you, my lord king, do not know it. He has slaughtered oxen, fatlings, and sheep in great numbers. He has invited all the king's sons, Abiathar the priest, and Joab the general of the army, but not your servant Solomon. Now, my lord king, all Israel is waiting for you to make known to them who is to sit on the throne after your royal majesty. If this is not done, when my lord the king sleeps with his fathers, I and my son Solomon will be considered criminals. While she was still speaking to the king, the prophet Nathan came in. When he had been announced, the prophet entered the king's presence, and bowing to the floor did him homage. Then Nathan said, Have you decided, my lord king, that Adonijah is to reign after you and sit on your throne? He went down today and slaughtered oxen, fattenings, and sheep in great numbers. He invited all the king's sons, the commanders of the army, and Abiathar the priest, and they are eating and drinking in his company, and saying, Long live King Adonijah. But me, your servant, he did not invite, nor Zadok the priest, nor Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, nor your servant Solomon. Was this done by my royal master's order, without my being told who is to succeed to your majesty's kingly throne? King David answered, Call Bathsheba here. When she re-entered the king's presence and stood before him, the king swore, As the Lord lives, who has delivered me from all distress, this very day I will fulfill the oath I swore to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, that your son Solomon should reign after me and should sit upon the throne in my place. Bowing to the floor in homage to the king, Bathsheba said, May my lord, King David, live forever. Then King David summoned Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah son of Jehoiada. When they had entered the king's presence, he said to them, Take with you the royal attendants. Mount my son Solomon upon my own mule, and escort him down to Gihon. There Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet are to anoint him king of Israel, and you shall blow the horn and cry, Long live King Solomon! When you come back in his train, he is to go in and sit upon my throne and reign in my place. I designate him ruler of Israel and of Judah. David rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. The length of David's reign over Israel was forty years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and thirty-three years in Jerusalem. Solomon was seated on the throne of his father David with his sovereignty firmly established. Daughters of Jerusalem, come forth and see King Solomon, wearing the crown with which his mother crowned him. On his day of joy, his wedding day. Endow the king with your justice, O God. May he govern the poor with justice. On his day of joy, his wedding day. From a letter to the Corinthians by St. Clement I, Pope and Martyr. Beloved, see what a marvelous thing love is. 
Its perfection is beyond our expression. Who can truly love save those to whom God grants it? We ought to beg and beseech him in his mercy that our love may be genuine, unmarred by any too human inclination. From Adam down to the present time, all generations have passed away, but those who were perfected in love by God's grace have a place among the saints who will be revealed when the kingdom of Christ comes to us. As it is written, Enter your chambers for a little while, until my wrath and anger pass away, and I shall remember a good day and raise you from your graves. We are blessed, beloved, if we fulfill the commands of the Lord in harmonious, loving union, so that through love our sins may be forgiven. For it is written, Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputes not iniquity, and in whose mouth there is no deceit. This is the blessing that has been given to those who have been chosen by God through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever. Amen. We should pray, then, that we may be granted forgiveness for our sins and for whatever we may have done when led astray by our adversaries' servants. And as for those who were the leaders of the schism and the sedition, they too should look to the common hope. For those who live in pious fear and in love, are willing to endure torment rather than have their neighbor suffer, and they more willingly suffer their own condemnation than the loss of that harmony that has been so nobly and righteously handed down to us. For it is better for a man to confess his sins than to harden his heart. Who then among you is generous? Who is compassionate? who is filled with love, he should speak out as follows. If I have been the cause of sedition, conflict, and schisms, then I shall depart. I shall go away wherever you wish, and I shall do what the community wants. If only the flock of Christ live in peace with the presbyters who are set over them, Whoever acts thus would win great glory for himself in Christ, and he would be received everywhere, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Thus have they acted in the past, and will continue to act in the future, who live without regret as citizens in the city of God. God has given us this commandment. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. On these two commandments rest the whole law and the prophets. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Let us pray. Father, through the obedience of Jesus, your servant and your son, you raised a fallen world. Free us from sin and bring us the joy that lasts forever. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.